Hi, welcome to RolfPots.com and welcome to Busan, Korea. Uh, I'm in the middle of my vagabonding travels right now, but I'm taking a little break in my old expatriate roost of Busan. And uh, it's an interesting place that uh, is not a very common attraction, but it's kind of a fun attraction. We're in the market area right now of Samyan. I want to tell you a little bit about our site, about my site. Uh, it just has some links to some writings I've done before, and it's a good place to find my past articles uh, from Salon Vagabonding. Uh, for the last five months, I've been in Southeast Asia, and after this, I'm going to take the Trans-Siberian Railroad from Beijing to St. Petersburg. So stay tuned, and you can follow my travels from here, or from Salon Travel, or from Busan Web. So enjoy my site, and cheers. Well, of course, it began with... Uh, it's been a lifelong interest in travel for me. Since I was about six or seven years old, all I could think about during my summer vacation was uh, going off to Colorado or Missouri or someplace like that. And then as I grew uh, older, then I explored more parts of the world. When I was in, right after college, I traveled all around the United States. Uh, the reason why I'm a vagabond traveler is, that, is because I don't have very much money. So I'm sort of forced to be a vagabond. Uh, to actualize my passion for travel. probably began to contemplate making a living by writing when I was 14, because when you're 14, you're not really aware of how, of the realistic consequences of making any sort of living. You know? So I thought that being a writer was sort of like being a dentist or an employee of Burger King or something. Uh, so it started as an interest and I think anybody who's interested in writing or in the arts in general has to sort of make their, their art a passion. So I came to be passionate about writing and uh, I failed a lot and uh, I kept working at it and uh, I sort of feel like I'm just beginning to be successful finally. Uh, probably the, the first, the writer that really brought Rolf Potts into the modern era uh, the guy who really changed my way of thinking was Kurt Vonnegut, and I'm sure lots of writers are the same way because Kurt Vonnegut appeals to people who are quite young. So maybe when I was uh, 16 or 17, I read my first Kurt Vonnegut book, and by the time I was 20 or 21, I'd read all of Kurt Vonnegut's books. Um, and since then, you know, I've gotten into some really great writers. I'm trying to think, like my favorite book is Catch-22, just as far as pure satires as far as very funny satire. Um, and my influences are pretty varied. You know, I've, I've read a lot of Edward Abbey, who's a naturalist writer um, who, who wrote a lot about the American Southwest and was also pretty funny. Uh, as far as travel writers, travel writing is something I haven't read in, until really until I started becoming a travel writer myself. Uh, I really like Pico Ayer. Um, uh, he's really brilliant travel writer, I think. So, probably started with, uh, started with Kurt Vonnegut and Pico Ayer is sort of my model right now. Um, probably most satisfying, it happened in Laos in February. I was able to uh, buy a boat uh, with a couple other Americans at that time and take it down the Mekong. We spent three weeks driving our own boat down the Mekong, which is really a unique and satisfying and sometimes terrifying experience, but I really enjoyed that. As far as bizarre, for, for me, some of my most bizarre experiences came from trying to cover the movie The Beach uh, down in uh, Phuket and Koh Phi Phi because I'm not, I don't really feel comfortable as a conventional journalist and so if anybody's read my Storming the Beach story, I had this very awkward experience with the producer of The Beach. Um, yeah, and it was more terrifying than running the rapids on the Mekong, you know, trying to figure out what I'm supposed to say to this this producer guy, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm not a starstruck person. I wasn't, I wasn't interested in uh, necessarily in Leonardo DiCaprio or, or the filmmakers, you know, as superstars, but I was just, uh, I was just sort of terrified that I was encroaching on this $40 million production. So that was probably my most bizarre experience is sitting in the, in the veranda of the Cape Panwa Hotel trying to talk to a producer and of course that led to me accidentally stealing his screenplay binder and so that was probably the most bizarre and being really sick is probably another unusual experience uh, I had my first marquee disease this year which is cholera got that in Laos 
and uh, it was awful when I had it, but it, it's sort of like one of those traveler's badges, you know, it means that you've really been to a place once you've caught their diseases. So, uh, at least in the first five months of my traveling this year, those, those stand out as my uh, big experiences. Well, uh, anybody who is an aspiring writer who has tried to get anything published has probably been immediately disappointed. So, my first advice is to be persistent. Uh, but that's just from a business standpoint as much as anything. From an artistic standpoint, you just have to be uh, a disciple of your craft. You have to think about it uh, and spend a lot of time on it. You have to write, even if it's not good, and then rewrite, and then finish a story and realize that maybe you can't do anything with that and then write again. It's a, it's a process. And I've even had people tell me that uh, my writing has improved over the course of the last year, you know, so it's an ongoing process and uh, it, nothing happens immediately. So I think persistence is the most important thing. Per persistence and discipline the most important things uh, as, a, as, an as an aspiring writer. Of course, I'm a little bit ahead of my essays, so uh, you can look forward to reading about Vietnam and Laos. You can look forward to reading about me getting cholera. Uh, but after Korea, I will go to Beijing, and then I'm going to take the Trans-Siberian Railway. I'm going to spend about a month on that. Um, Beijing to St. Petersburg, with stop-offs in Mongolia, and uh, Lake Baikal, and Moscow. Uh, and then, then it's Europe, and I don't really have many specific plans for Europe. So my, my big thing next is the Trans-Siberian, sort of a classic overland trip that I'm really looking forward to. I suppose I'll be a vagabond as long as I'm poor, because... Uh, I've sort, of, I've sort of crossed the point, I'll probably always travel, because uh, it's too late, it's like an addiction now. So as long as I'm scraping funds together, uh, I'll be a vagabond. And in a way, I'm so used to traveling uh, as a budget traveler and as a backpacker that uh, I can't really imagine traveling in any other way. It's, it's really fun to me. Sort of adventure travel is, is, uh, is my passion, I guess. Uh, as a writer, it's hard to say. Uh, I've been surprised by how quickly things have progressed this year. You know, uh, Last year, I didn't really have any plans at all. I was just trying to get anything published. And now I have a good deal going with Salon. And so, as far as this year is concerned, I'm, I really just want to do my best for Salon. You know, I want to uh, get a good year's worth of Salon material and make vagabonding the best it can be. And then after that, I think I'll have more opportunities as a writer. I don't want to really jinx myself by saying what, but I think uh, if I continue to uh, do my best in vagabonding, then the other opportunities, you know, with uh, other magazines or possibly books, things like that, those opportunities will present themselves, hopefully. It's sort of an interesting connection to writing. When I, was, when I was 24, I traveled the United States for a year, and I decided to write a book about it. And I was very naive. I thought you just wrote a book about it and sent it off and it got published and you were a writer. Well, it, in all, for all practical purposes, this was a failure. So I really wasn't sure what to do. Um, by the time I realized that this book was a failed project, I was about 25 or 26. And uh, I wanted to try something different, but I didn't want to do something conventional yet in the United States, like graduate school or some sort of... Uh, serious straight-laced job. So I had a couple friends who worked in Busan, a couple of university friends, and I said, look, give me a job. So within a month they got me a job, and within three months I was here, and uh, I ended up staying here for two years. Uh, my experience was, was a good experience. You know, I'm, I'm glad I came here. Uh, it wasn't a perfect experience, but what is, you know. Uh, but I learned, you know, that's, I think it's important that no matter how old you are that you're learning. And there was just so much to learn by living in a different place, let alone Korea. My writing evolved in large part because I did a lot of reading here. I don't think you can really be a, a writer unless you're a reader. Uh, because that's the example, you know, that other people's works are a blueprint for what works. Uh, also, um, Korea gave me the space to just write. And... Uh, so I wrote. I wasn't always uh, as disciplined as I even am now, but I wrote and I thought, and I thought and I wrote, and I organized and I thought and I wrote, and eventually I started submitting, and 
I had some success and failure in submitting, but finally uh, I had the right kind of success, and that's grown. So it's a slow process, but uh, my experience in Busan was definitely a very important part of uh, the writing process. Well, that's a hard one. I uh, Inspirational. I think, uh, for me, education was more important than inspiration in Busan. I learned, uh, I learned the important le lessons of traveling and of living overseas and of being overseas and of, and of writing about that experience. Uh, I traveled a lot in the United States, but that's different. I was traveling in my own culture. So I had to learn a lot of important things here. Uh, just, you know, patience in another culture and, and, and accepting the fact that you don't always understand what's going on. Uh, and as a writer, I learned to, uh, to observe things, observe how things are different from what I'm used to and compare to what I, to how things would be back home in the United States. So I think inspiration, Korea wasn't as important as a matter of inspiration as it was uh, education. I really learned some important lessons here. I think the place has changed in my perceptions, you know, before, when I first came here, uh, Busan just seemed so crowded and dirty and Asian and and, uh, and mystifying and mystical, you know, it, it just seemed like a really foreign place. But after Southeast Asia, which is more crowded and more dirty and more Asian than this place, it seemed like home, you know. I came home and things seemed so clean and quiet and comfortable. Um, that, that was a matter of perception, though. I think in a, in a very basic way, Korea hasn't changed much itself. Uh, a lot of my old friends here uh, are doing different things. Uh, yeah, I guess I made all, all of my friends in Busan I, are my 1996 and 1997 friends, you know. And so I'm amazed that all of a sudden everybody I know can speak Korean very well or they're doing something uh, completely new or interesting. And uh, to me it seems like the expatriate community doesn't have the same sort of uh, meat-headed energy it had in 1997, but I think that's because my, uh, my friends have lived here for a good four or five years and they're sort of maturing. Now I'm sure that, that the, the meathead party crowd is around someplace, but... Uh, uh, I don't know, I think you're naturally, you naturally go back and hang out with your old friends, so I haven't met any of the new crowd.